Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Inkiruka Izukiri, and I'm your host on today's episode on PAU Insights. So our guest for today is Mr. Chuka Obi. So good afternoon, sir. How are you feeling today? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for having me. I just finished a class um, teaching on creativity, and I think it was really good. Actually, it was very good, and I have to go to. Okay. I was actually a member of the class, so I can also testify that it was a very interactive class and a very creative class. So today, we're going to be like having a conversational thing. So I'll be asking you like a few questions and I hope you're not shy to answer the questions. Uh, I'm sure we can get okay. by. Okay, so my first question for you today is, can you tell us more about your transition from being a comic book writer and illustrator to venturing into advertising? So, like, how did you actually do that? Because it's one thing to be in comics and then from there you're just... So how? Uh, so it's not really that crazy, to be honest, because if you check out the history of comic books what you'll find out what you'll find out in the history of comic books is that comics were actually created to advertise mm. so okay. um, Captain America and Superman who are like some of the earliest comic book characters were created by the American government to advertise America to the people to oh, push okay. up to push up the, um, the emotions during the war so Captain America was to give them the idea that, oh, there was a super soldier fighting on America's side. Same thing for Superman. So these things were meant for propaganda. They were created to advertise. And the marriage between them has always been there. So what they do is, and comic books tell stories. That's what they do, they tell stories. Okay. Via visual arts, and via words. What, advertising, what does advertising do? Tell stories. Tell stories that draw you closer to the brand. And that's what comic books do, telling stories that draw you closer to the characters. So they are very, very similar if you know how to play them. Okay, so would you say that this has like aided, aided your creativity in the advertising space? And like, since you are an artist yourself, so does this make you see advertising through a different light? Absolutely. Okay. It gives you so much, because Comic books are based on a lot of imagination. Okay. And advert- great advertising comes with imagination. It comes from a place of, a place of imagination. So it got, a, it, it aided me so much that what used to happen was anytime we we're discussing ideas, in, whether, whether with the clients or in the agency, I'll draw the idea out. Or other people can say, oh, I have this idea, can you help me draw it out? So it helped a lot. So you can even solve problems for the clients right in the client's office because you draw it out, they approve it right there before you go and shoot it. So yeah, it's a very, very powerful use. Everything that I had been doing before I went to advertising became an asset. I used to, I used to rap and create music, I have albums. And so now you want to create a jingle, you want to create it. I just write it out and I present it right in front of the client and he approves it while I'm hitting and beatboxing on the table. Oh. Yeah, so all those things come in handy in the advertising space. Okay, so from your quick description of everything, it is quite obvious that Mr. Chukalbi is a man of many talents. So, and for the past two decades, you have been in different aspects of the creative space. So, what aspect of your creativity or what aspect of this industry did you like enjoy the most and why? So, which one was like the most? fulfilling out of everything that you have been in? I think for me it's not any of the things as much as the campaigns themselves. Oh. So what usually happens is when you have a, an agenda, when you have a goal, you know, everything is being geared to meet that goal. So if me, I'm a bit of a combative person when it comes to advertising, so I like war. So when it's okay, client uh, uh, competition is disturbing you. Like when we, I was working on MTN and at the at the time kept poking fun at MTN. It yeah. was annoying. So once I had a chance and I did the Sakai don't point thing, yeah. moved. So it was a thing. It felt really good. Okay. So this this kind of, I like this kind of things. So how you do it is is just the means to an end. So, for example, people think that Saka was the one singing, I don't pour to, it was not him. Oh, okay. I had somebody else sing it completely. Oh. Somebody who could sing, it was just mine. So, everything comes in. I wrote the song, actually. 
In fact, it's not here I wrote it because I want to produce it. So it's all the beats coming together for different reasons. Yeah. So um, that, so sometimes the medium is different. So music led the medium when I was in Saturday Night Live. Mm-hmm. When would, I was doing advertising for Avatar, the movie, The Last Airbender, I had to do a mural which was on um, Zumba. So we actually did a graffiti art on the billboard. So then um, the art came in front. So every time you get a chance to use one of those talents, I put it in the front. So based on whatever it is, I enjoy it that way. So as long as the goal is achieved. Okay, that's very interesting. So you have worked with multiple leading brands like the you know like you've worked with a lot of brands so how do you ensure brand building and how do you also ensure that you're also because it's one thing to work with brands but it's another thing to also understand how these brands work yes. so where do you know okay this is for mtn or this is for comics or this yes. is for, like how do you now bring your own personality but also incorporate it with like okay so what happens is every brand is supposed to have a brand identity okay and normally it is the job of the brand itself to build that Um. yes so they have a corporate identity manual or they're supposed to have it which speaks to who they are what brand uh, or they are what your brand archetype is are they a lover brand mm-hmm. are they a business brand are they a family brand are they a rebel brand like you can tell that red bull is a rebel brand right mtn is a family brand you know glue is a nigerian brand um so what is your space are you an adventurous yeah. brand so once you have that it starts to determine the kind of communication that you should create for that brand. So it's almost like when you're making clothes for people, even fitting glasses for people, um, hair for people. You look at that person's makeup, look at the person's style, look at the person's personality. Then you, you choose what that person should wear, yeah. how that person should appear. Mm-hmm. That's exactly how it is. Okay, so going back to the Saka um, Dumpot um, advert, yeah. it, it's just like referred to one of the biggest ads in the Nigerian history. So. How did you make, okay, or what would you say led to the success of the adverts? So I think I always say that the key, the power of every great campaign is the insight and the strategy. Okay. So the insight for me when we're discussing them, because what MTN wanted to do was tell people, because they knew, being the high, the biggest subscriber base, at yes. you know, once people can put their numbers, you're supposed to be the hardest hit. Okay. So they were trying to do camp, um, a campaign where they were trying to convince people, you know, to tell people, oh, stay on MTN, we we'll have the widest network, blah, blah, blah. But I was like, that's what you say to them regularly anyway. Instead of being on the defensive, go on the offensive. So the idea was, instead of saying, oh, stay on us because we have the widest network, say that, ah, now that you can put your number, everybody can now be on MTN. Yeah. Let's, let's tell them, oh, you know really deep down with all your noise, you wanted to be on MTN, now you have the chance. Okay. So that was the plan. That was the strategy, that was yes. the idea. And so based on that, we were like, oh, let's show somebody that was on, on another um, network coming to MTN. Coming to MTN. So yeah. that's how we came up. And okay. then Saka was the perfect guy. Okay, so I must say that you're actually a very intellectual man. And it's very, very obvious that you do things with intentionality. So you are the head of... Um, creativity and innovation at Global.com. So how do you make sure that that creativity stays in the brand? How do you ensure that your team members also are like in your same mind space and all of that? So how do, how do you basically like keep the creativity running? Yeah, so the thing about creativity is creativity begets creativity. Yeah. You know, so it's something that you continuously um, grow and continuously inspire and feed. Yeah. So the best way to do it is to find benchmarks. All across the world, people are doing creative stuff. Share those things. Let them spark ideas. Let them spark discussions. Sometimes let the discussions actually be against it. It's fine. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't have to agree with it. So it's being able to consistently keep that creative conversation going. That's how you do it. So consistently share stuff that inspires creative discussions. Okay, so still on advertising, 
could you like briefly tell us why this whole talk on creativity is very important when you're trying to advertise whether a person a brand an idea a concept why is the whole concept of creativity very important everybody has a, a need everybody has a problem both humans and society yes and you need solutions now it's one thing to have a solution it's another thing to have a solution that people care about so creativity helps you create helps you create solutions or show the solutions in ways that people can care about because okay. care is the most important thing is being able to care about something you want to if you don't care about something it ends um, name brands only exist because they make people care about something yeah oh, I care that I'm wearing this brand I care that my phone is an iPhone yeah. I, you know that's why you have those things so once you can create the ability to care you know it changes the discussion and creativity is how you do that because because without creativity you can't give people a reason to care so that's the truth okay so still on that so in your spare time you try your best to make sure you facilitate like workshops yeah. for young people and the african union i mean like our yeah. class is like a typical yes, example absolutely. so what made you to say okay instead of just giving out my talent and using it to work I should also like use it to like train other people. So like, what gave you that whole thing? I think is is a part of two things. The first is because that's how I also got good. Okay. Because people invested in me. Okay. Uh, my first creative director, Anthony Echo, invested in me. Um, before then, the friend of friends of mine who we formed a group together, who we drew together, they invested in me. Uh, my second creative directors, they did the same thing. Um, Tundi Sule and Chuma Pumselu. Yes. So they invested in me. It only it only makes sense that she's saying. To invest in other yes. people. Yes. Also because you do not have these solutions if you don't give people the ability to make these solutions. You can't solve everything yourself. Yes. You know, a, a team is only as good as the 11 people on the field. It's useless if there's only one group player. Yes. You know, so let's continuously create problem solvers across the nation. If there are 10 problem solvers in the nation, whatever we need to fix will be fixed in 200 years. Yes. If there are a million problem solvers, it will be fixed in two years. So that's the way to think about it. Okay, so that's just so another intellectual thing. So um, going back a bit, you were talking about how you were also into music and everything. Yeah. So how would you say you being into music and all of that, how has it also helped your creative process, be it in advertising or be it in your own personal works? So how has that helped? A lot because, you know, music, it has, it has so many aspects. Yes. There's the composition of it, there's the listening of it, there's the enjoying of it. Yes, I can read it. Yes. So it helps a lot. A lot of people can't even, some people that can't even work unless there's music playing. Yes. You know, so people can't do anything except there's music playing. Yes, me. And I found out that people listen to messages more when it's in music form. Yeah. So if you're able to put a class in a song, almost nobody will feel an exam. Yes. That's the truth. Yes. So, so that's the way I like to think about it. So whatever message you want to pass, music helps you pass it a lot. Yeah. Whether it's a message of music, a message of you know unity, of buy my product. Yeah. You know. So in, two, in 2015, the biggest song in the world was actually an advert. So um, Drake was singing One Dance, right? Mm -hmm. I need the one dance, got a Hennessy. In my hand. So he was literally advertising for Hennessy. Mm. You know, so those things work. Okay, okay, okay. That's actually smart. So with your um, vast experience, what advice would you give people that are also aspiring to be in this um, industry or people okay let me use myself as a personal example I, I'm also like into various things so what advice would you give people that also have different creative aspects and like how would they know when to like put it together how to use the two together things like that so people that are aspiring what would you advertise Abby tell your listeners I'll tell them to learn the biggest problem with people is they don't really want to learn. Learning is everything, and it never stops. One of the reasons why I also love to teach is that every time I teach, I learn. I remind myself things I know, and people I'm talking to share stuff with me that makes me understand 
more. So I don't, I don't, when I talk with young people, I become more young because I can hear and see a young person's thoughts. Mm -hmm. If I don't teach, I won't have that. Yes. You know, so learning is so key for me. You know, and everybody gets better when they learn because the world is consistently changing. What it was when I started my advertising career is completely different from what it is now. Mm -hmm. And so the key I'll tell anybody is find every avenue you can to learn. Imbibe everything that you can learn, learn. And learning is not just taking it, it's also using whatever it is, practice. Try the things you've learned out, see if they work, see how they work better. See how you can make them work for your own unique situation. So learn and keep learning. Okay, so um, I also have another question. So how do you um, balance all of these things together and also make sure that you yourself you're getting like at least some time to yourself so from mentoring to comics to music how do you balance each and every one of these things okay so it balance changes for different people okay. but for me I find balance in that these things come in naturally to what I do okay. so when I do them I'm not sectionalizing my life you know they're all part and parcel so even when I'm living family life they come into that. Mm -hmm. You share, you discuss with family, you, you enjoy those times with them, you learn from those times, you give into those times. So it becomes like one full um, ecosystem. Yes. So I think that's the way to go. Plus, because of creative, the way creative people are, you, you need a lot of sleep. Sleep is very important, at least for people like who are, who are advanced in years. So um, I would say that Find a way to incorporate it into your everyday life, yes. even if you don't necessarily have specific times for it. It also makes it natural for you, you know. So even if you say, okay, so an hour I'm giving to actually focusing on it, the rest is applying it, because application is almost the best form of knowledge. Okay. So thank you so much, Mr. Chukobi, for joining us on today's episode of PAU Insights. And thank you also for watching this episode. And we hope to see you guys on the next episode. So stay tuned for the next episode. Goodbye, everyone. You could tell them bye. Thank you, everybody. It was my pleasure to be on PAU Insights today. Thank you. And have a great day.